Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to understand what is frameworks and especially we're going to start with the implementation of hybrid frameworks. Let's first understand what is the meaning of framework. Guys, a framework, framework defines a set of rules or best practices that we can follow in a systematic way to achieve the desired result. This is the meaning of framework literally. But if I talk about framework meaning in Selenium, the Selenium framework is a code structure that makes code maintenance easy and efficient. What is the meaning of this? Guys, first of all, a basic idea of creating a framework is to systematically arrange the code. That means we should be able to implement all the actions from A to Z, that is writing the test cases, the execution of the test cases, generating the reports for the defects and less code. So we should have less dependency on the code. You know, basically we are organizing our code. You might have thousand classes for your project and there will be lots of line of codes in it. And just think about the execution of those thousand test cases. We know that yes, with the help of testng.xml, you can execute multiple test cases at once. But what about the data execution, dependency of the code, maintenance of the code, same code is repeating again and again in the same test cases. Thousand times I have to write the same code. Mostly, if you have seen your code, guys, we keep data and code at the same location. No, let's say I'm writing a code to enter username. Now, username values also I'm keeping in the same test class and code also I'm keeping in the same class. If the same username I want to use for separate classes, I need to go and write this username again, again and again in all classes. So I'm keeping my code, I'm keeping my data at the same location and it is not at all reusable as well as it is not readable. And guys, framework is the best practice to maintain your code, reduce your efforts, increase code reusability. Let's understand this with the help of one example. Because in this example, I've written two test cases in test ng. And this is my before suit and before method where I'm keeping my you know, driver's location as well as the common commands which I want to pass for these two test cases. Now, these two test cases are first test case is to write any keyword in Google search box. So this is my Google search box element locator. And this is the value I want to pass. So this is one test case. Second test case is to fetch title of Google. Is to fetch title of Google and then display that title. At the end, I want to close my browser. So this is my test case. Now look at this. If you look at this thing over here. So this is my common code, right? Which I'm going to pass, I think, almost for all the classes which I want to write. So if I want to reduce dependency of the code, I can take this code out and keep it at a one location. So I will take out this code. So common code. Let's say I kept it in one class. I'm just naming this class as base class. I took out the common commands and put it here in one class called base class. So let me just put it over here. Okay. Now, second thing I can do over here is I can look for the element locator and its value. So this is my code, element locator. with value, I mean our element locator's value. And this thing is my data. So this is my data I want to pass. Why can't I have something in which I can keep these element locators and the values which I want to pass to them? Now for this, we can have something called POMs. POM stands for page object model. Let's have high level understanding of POM. First of all, POMs are your object repository where you can maintain element locators with its values. So you can say that this is one of the class in which you can keep element locator and its value separately. 
Now, what is the benefit of it? Let's say I have one page. In this one page, I'm talking about the web page. I have one field. I have some elements on it. So elements are name, phone number, and I have one button called submit. Now, this is my page. I'm going to maintain its element locator and value in the common repository called PUM. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to say, OK, name is my value. And it's element locator. Let's say I'm using by dot ID and value is name. OK, by dot again ID and value is phone number. So this is element locator value for name, and this is element locator value for phone number. Guys, you can create as many POMs as your pages are in website. Let's say in my websites, I have 50 pages. I will be creating 50 POMs. For each page, I'll have one POM in which I will be storing all web elements for a particular page. So I'm simply maintaining all the elements in POM. Why we are doing this? Let's understand this. Look at this over here. This is my web elements locator and its value. Let's say I've written many code of line over here. And tomorrow, client changes the requirement. Client is saying, you know what? Now the search box name should be changed. This is for Google search box. So let's say now the Google search box name should be changed. And instead of Google search, I want to write name as Google find it out. So this is the name they want to give. Now developer changed that name over there. He changed some properties in the code and eventually element locator and its value got changed. And let's say I've written 50 test cases with the same code in which I'm referring this element locator and value. I have to manually go to all those 50 test cases and change this value over there. What if I take out this section over here because if client change the requirement guys what can maximum change only this section can change do you think driver dot find element change no this is a selenium command why change of requirement will affect selenium commands so driver dot find element will remain same dot send keys will remain same and data whatsoever you want to pass you can pass over here so this section maximum this section will change what if i do this thing that i take out this section store it in a variable and instead of using hard coded value i use variable over here that is what pums are i'm storing element locators and its value in one of the variable and then using those variables here let's say this complete definition i store it in a variable called search how we do it, I'll let you know, but let's say I store this part here in a variable called search. Now, instead of using this hard coded value, I can use this variable called search. And the search variable I've stored in a class called POM. So let's say I've written search, search, assign this. So in search variable, I've stored this value. And in all my 50 test cases, I'm using search instead of this here understood so let's say in future clients want to change requirement my point of change will be only one because here the definition is stored and all my test cases are using search instead of hard-coded value in future if clients say okay i want to change the requirement i need to just go to the pom change it over here because all other classes are using this instead of this this is the benefit of using page object model because with the help of this, you are reducing the code. Also, you're reducing the dependency. And change of the requirement will have minimal impact on my code. This is how your code should be created. Because we know as a tester, there will be change of requirement. There might be change of requirement many times. And if I pass hard-coded values, maintenance of the code will be very difficult it's going to be quite difficult for me to accommodate change of requirement 
because I've written hard-coded values in my all test cases. That's why PUM says that when you are testing a particular page, keep this element locators and its value into me and refer the variables in the code so that if there is a change of requirement, you will be just visiting PUM, changing it over here, and it will be reflected in all the test cases which are referring it. This is the most systematic approach to create a code. All right, so we reduce this code also, we reduce this code also. We kept this section in POMs, we kept this section in a base class. Let's visit that again. So here I've created the POM. Now, now, next thing I can create here is my test case layer. That means this is a section where I'm going to write all the test case classes, all the test cases. Now, how I'm going to maintain these three things? Let's understand that. Of course, my test case is going to use this common code. And the common code will be used by my POM too. So why can't I do this thing that I will make this common code, this base class as parent of both POM and test layer. So that if they want to use this code, they can use it from here. As you understand, concept of inheritance is that child can use all the properties of parent. So both of them can extend base class. So there will be least code in test cases. Also, they will have least dependency. Change of requirement will have minimal impact as you have created POM. Now, this is the high level design of a framework. Now we understand why we create framework. So we create framework to reduce code, reduce dependency of the code. We create framework to increase reusability of the code. So here, if you are keeping it common, reusability will increase. We are creating frameworks so that change of requirement has minimal impact. Lastly, it should be easy for us to maintain the code. Once the design is created, once the structure is created, you need to just add the test cases because everything else is already maintained. So maintenance is super easy. Now let's understand what are the different types of frameworks as we have mainly three types of frameworks, data driven test framework, keyword driven test framework and hybrid test framework. As we know, we're gonna learn what is hybrid test framework because commonly companies are using hybrid, but we'll understand the difference between all of them. First of all, Data-driven framework. Data-driven framework is like parameterization. If I'm passing multiple set of data to my test cases from external Excel sheets or databases, it is called data-driven framework. If I talk about keyword framework, this is the example of keyword. In keyword framework, you will be creating Excel sheet with different keywords declared in it. And in your test script, instead of writing code, you will be using keywords from this Excel sheet. So it's just a method used for speeding up the automatic testing by separating keywords from common set of functions and instructions. All the operations and instructions to be performed are written in some external Excel sheets. User can easily maintain the functionality from here. So like here, keywords are go to URL, set text, set text for username and password. I'm saying case click. Now click is not my predefined word. I'm taking it from this Excel sheet. So if the keywords are declared in a separate Excel sheet and you're using it in your script, this is called keyword driven framework. Now the best thing is hybrid framework. Hybrid framework is a combination of both data driven and keyword. That's why mostly companies are using hybrid frameworks instead of just data driven or keyword. So guys, if you have implemented hybrid framework, that means you know both data-driven as well as keyword-driven frameworks. So this is the idea behind creation of frameworks. In our next video, we will be understanding how to implement the frameworks. So what are the steps we're gonna to follow to implement the frameworks? That's all for this video. Thanks for now.